What's up? It's been a while. Apple here. Um, got all my computer stuff. Now, I do want to say this video is going to be very scuffed. Um, like super scuffed. I'm doing this all on my cell phone using my selfie camera right now. And um, you can imagine the quality is not going to be great. The lighting, not great. Uh, the glare on my glasses, horrible. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to make do with what I can do. Um, I can't even flip the camera, so I'm going to have to do a lot of video editing um, as I kind of go back and forth between me and my computer, which you can see behind me. Um, so, yeah, I got my case there. I'm just going to kind of go through all the stuff I got. All right, guys, so here is all the goodies. Um, I do want to say this is the first time I've built a computer in probably close to 20 years now. Um, so pretty much prior to this, what I would usually do, and I'll just kind of show with this computer that I am had some cooling issues, which is why I have that fan there. Um, but with this computer here, this is actually, if I can bring it around here, um, a Dell Precision T3600. It's running a, um, and actually a pretty awesome for the time Xeon processor in there. Um, but it's old, old stuff. Um, it's running DDR3 RAM, a uh, pretty darn slow RAM, even though it's ECC, which is error correcting, um, RAM, but yeah. And then got this beast of a ROG Strix, uh, 1080 Ti in there. Uh, it's got pretty lights, which I don't care for. Uh, so thankfully in my new case, you're not going to see any of that crap. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, running three SATA, three SSDs in there. Um, so it's not a bad build, but I could obviously tell that the RAM and my processor were bottlenecking the heck out of my games, and my 1080 Ti was just never really getting pushed um, as far as I probably could. So, uh, you know, we all got that stimulus check, and that's where I decided to go with this. So first things first, my case. Um, this case here is a Fractal Design Define C, as in Charlie. Um, very clean looking case, which is why I went with it. So as you can see, there are no tempered glass. Um, I bought an extra fan for it. Uh, we'll see if I need more than that. We're going to just kind of test her out, see how she runs. Uh, hopefully there's going to be enough airflow in this bad boy. But if not, there's a lot of room for expansion. But uh, yeah, nice and clean. The front is just plain front panel. Like, I love this. It's just clean. There's just no frills, no like extra denting in it. Um, up here at the top, uh, this is kind of cool. So this is like, I don't know how I pop that. I probably have to do it from the inside maybe. But um, I can actually swap this out and put a uh, more of a mesh um, ventilation thing up top here. I'm just going to leave it like this for now because I'm not planning on putting any fans on the top of my case here. Um, and the back here, again, nice and clean. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. So that's the case. Uh, that's going to be where I'm going to be throwing all my goodies inside of there. Um, in terms of my power supply, I went with a 750 watt gold uh, Seasonic um, power supply. It's partially modular, so all the essential cables here um, are just hardwired into the power supply. And then um, you can add however many of these that you need, um, which chances are, I'll have to look and see what, what my cabling is going to look like, but probably at least use two of these since I am going to be running three different SATA 3 hard drives um, or solid state drives. I shouldn't call them hard drives. Um, but yeah. In terms of my RAM, got here, as you can, there's a lot of glare on that. Uh, I'll just open this up. So, uh, running some Ripjaw 5s. Um, let's see. Eh, anyway. Um, it's hard to tell, but they are 3600, um, and they're at 16, 18, 18, and I think 39 is the timings on those bad boys. Uh, should be pretty good, and I'm going to kind of go through the process of getting that set up in the BIOS and all of that good stuff after I get my Windows installed. So, uh, speaking of installing Windows, I, this is my very first NVMe 
M.2 solid state drive that's going to go straight on the motherboard. Uh, it's a 500 gigabyte one. These things are getting so cheap right now, it's ridiculous. So, I, um, granted, the speed difference between this and a normal SATA 3 SSD is not substantial at all. Um, I just figured if I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10, uh, why not just get one of these bad boys and throw it in there for how inexpensive these hard drives or these solid state drives are becoming my motherboard. So um, this was hard. There, almost all the motherboards seem to be sold out on Amazon. And so um, I ended up going a little bit fancier than I was expecting. I uh, went with this MSI uh, Gaming Plus X570 motherboard here. Let's see if I can pop this open. Um, well, it's inside of a big ESD bag, so it's kind of hard to see. But obviously, I'm going to be pulling this out while I'm doing my build. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of going through all the components. But yeah, it's an X570, so it supports the PCI um, Extreme 4. So I should get the fastest speeds possible on my M.2 drive. Um, and, I mean, not that... <sighs> I don't think that the new newest video cards are going to really take advantage of the speed that you get with the PCIe 4, but I have it if if they do somehow pull a hat out of their, you know, um, pull a rabbit out of their hat, I should say, and uh, really amp that speed up, I'll at least have the architecture on my motherboard for that. So moving forward, got all the cabling here. These are the cables that came with, obviously, you got your power cable some different Molex cables and stuff like that for your SATA 3 that came with that power supply over there. And then we got our Ryzen chip here. So this is my Ryzen 5 3600X. And then the main reason I ended up spending the extra 20 bucks on that processor over just the standard Ryzen 5 3600 is it has it came with a better cooler. Um, so this is the, I think it's called the Wraith Spire. Um, it's a little bit better cooler than the one that came with the, just the standard 3600. And to me, that just seemed worth it. So, yeah. Uh, so those are all the parts. Um, to answer any questions in terms of, like, how am I going to go about this? So I don't have an ESD strap for my arm. Um, I live in Las Vegas where it is very dry, and because it's very dry, uh, static electricity is more of an issue here. So what am I going to do to prevent myself from uh, hurting things? Uh, what I think I'm going to end up doing is twofold. So first things first, I'm going to be pulling the motherboard out, setting it up on top of my box here, and I'm just going to start putting in my components. So I'm going to be installing my memory, my um, CPU, my CPU fan, my M.2 drive, and all of that. And what I'm going to do, and this is a little trick that I saw on Linus Tech Tips, is I'm going to take my power supply here, I'm going to plug it into a wall, but I'm obviously not going to turn it on because it's not going to be plugged, like I'm not going to have anything plugged into the actual power supply. However, since, and this is just from standard, like, Electronics 101, so the big round plug on this bad boy is your grounding plug. Um, so on a standard wall outlet, um, what that provides is a sort of ground. So that way, if something were to surge or something crazy happens, if your component can support it, which modern power supplies can, what they can do is they can try and direct all of that excess power into the ground. Well, what's cool about that is that if I plug this cable into my power supply here, I can just every so often just go and touch this. It's made out of metal. The power supply itself is grounded. So if this is plugged into a wall, even if it's not turned on, I can just touch this to basically short myself out to ground and ensure that I haven't built up any charge. Um, essentially, you as a human being are a giant capacitor and... Um, everything around me is a dielectric that causes me to build up a charge to everything around me. And the last thing I want to do is build up a charge, touch this thing, and fry the, fry the chip, and wham, bam, I'm out $200 on that, which would really, really super suck. So we're going to try and avoid that, um, and that is my plan for that. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pull the motherboard out, and then I will start to record uh, me installing some other stuff 
Now, because I am uh, recording this with a cell phone and I have no way of holding it while I do stuff, um, unfortunately, you're not going to see me install any of this stuff. So I'm just going to kind of take a video of uh, what it looks like after I'm done with it. So again, thank you so much for dealing with my scuffed video here. And uh, I'm going to be learning a lot about video editing after this. And I plan on doing all that video editing on this computer once it's done. So that'll be exciting. Um, anyway. All right, guys. So here we are. I have successfully installed the processor. It is under that giant fan there. My 2G skill RAM. Uh, right there so little thing there is and it doesn't label it on the motherboard although if I were to look in there it would probably tell me that this is the correct way to do it um, but basically every single build video I have watched um, the idea is these are set up in dual channel and you generally speaking will almost always go into the slot furthest from the processor and then you're going to skip one and then one it here. Uh, this way, these two are working basically double duty and it allows them to do their double data rate and all the other fun stuff. So uh, allows it to be a dual channel memory, which is important. It helps speed things up. It helps keep your system performing efficiently. Um, never recommend installing just one stick of RAM. Uh, two eight gig sticks of RAM like I have here is always gonna be more efficient than running um, one 16 gig stick of RAM. Um, and if I wanted to upgrade to 16 gigs, I'd probably just buy the same exact kit and then install it into the other two slots. Although quad channel is, uh, hasn't really shown a um, big increase in performance or anything like that. But if I do need the extra RAM, maybe um, I decided to get really into video editing or something like that that requires that amount of RAM, I can look into expanding that and installing another kit but for the time being I am quite happy with the way I have it set up here um, so the fan actually already had a thermal pad of um, thermal paste installed on the bottom of it so I didn't have to do anything fancy there um, I did have to remove and I don't have it because I already pulled it off to the side actually I'm grab it here for some reason they use these weird proprietary I guess this is for certain fans out there although almost none of them from what I've seen use this anymore so I ended up having to remove these so that I could put that fan on there um, big thing you don't want to just tighten one down and then just go to the next and tighten it down next and tighten it down uh, these are spring-loaded screws might be kind of hard to tell um, but essentially you want to get them just barely started you want to thread them in there um, and then go to the one across from it so you want to do this crisscross pattern and then go and get that one threaded in there go to this one thread it in there and then back over and thread that one in um, and then once you get them all threaded you'll do that same pattern over and over to get them tightened most of the way and then do one more pass to make sure that there is none of them that are loose um, and then just for good measure, go one more pass and make sure that it's nice and tight. Don't over crank it. Don't over torque these screws. Um, you can cause damage or shear a screw off and um, ruin your cooler and or possibly your motherboard. And that would not be good. Um, so the other thing I installed is, and you can see it right here, is my M.2 hard drive there. A little bit tricky, so you have to make sure, this is my first time doing this, but this slides into slot there, and you put a, quite a bit of pressure to get it to slide all the way in. But it's a very satisfying like click when it clicks into place. And then I had to use, the motherboard came with this crazy like elevated heat sink thing there that it, it basically sits on. So this M.2 actually has like like half a centimeter of clearance from the board. Um, what's crazy is that they also include this super heavy duty heat sink for it. Um, the only thing is that it uses this as where one of the screws goes in. And that happens to be one of the uh, standoffs for 
having it go into my case. So I can't actually install the heatsink until I have the uh, motherboard in the case. A little weird there, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so now that I've gotten most of that done, uh, the next step is going to be mostly case related things. So um, next thing I need to do is I need to install the um, the I.O. shield on the back of the case, which I'll come around and kind of give you an idea. So um, I don't think it goes that way. I think it goes this way. Um, actually, we can check. So uh, yeah, so that's the shield is going to be like that, which means the shield is going to be like this in the back of the case there. I'm also going to go ahead and get my uh, second fan installed. So there's the one exhaust fan here in the back. Uh, you can see in there, there's one intake fan. And my plan is I'm gonna have two intake fans. Um, it's always better to have more cool air coming out. Uh, granted, you want the warm air to be coming out as well. Depending on how the thermals of my system uh, perform, if it seems like it's getting a little too hot, um, I may go ahead and take the hard um, metal top off and put the mesh one up there instead to allow more air to vent out um, if I feel that's necessary but uh, we'll do some testing and we'll see obviously I'm going to have to open the case up and get everything ready there as well um, and then uh, before I cable things up and put all the power cables and everything in I'm going to uh, go to the next part of our video which will probably be me installing the um, we're talking about installing this bad boy into the case as well. Um, again, I really wish I could have uh, shown you me actually doing all of this, but um, you know, social distancing. Uh, don't have a colleague who can hold a camera for me and just videotape me installing everything, um, and I don't have the money to get a mount for. A camera and mount it up and do some sort of craziness like that so this is what we're gonna have and uh, yeah so next up this bad boy is gonna be open and hopefully this will be in there and nothing is gonna be broken so I know I said that the next scene we were gonna have this motherboard inside of this bad boy but before I did that I just wanted to say how amazing this case is uh, I love how far cases have come in the last 15, 20 years now, because this is amazing. Um, sorry for the lighting there, but anyway, this case is beautiful. So they have these nice little rubber like doorway there. That's for the cable management. So I can have all the, so the motherboard's going to be mounted in here, and then the cabling can go in here, route right around the back side here. So here's the back side of this case. And then the power supply is going to sit down there in its own little tiny compartment, its own little like, uh, um, its own basically thermal, you know, spot down there, which is great. And um, it also has all these mounting points back here for my uh, solid state SATA 3s. So they're going to just be completely separated from the rest of the computer, allowing for great airflow in this thing. I love this too. All the cabling is already nice and organized this is amazing like this is beautiful i'm so glad i went with like what i saw in reviews uh the other cool thing are the uh the screws so the thumb screws and that's for the power supply which i'll have to pull that out to get the power supply uh firmly in there correctly um but the panels these panels are heavy duty like um, it's, I wish I could just kind of explain. These are heavy panels, and they've got this soundproofing material on the inside here. Um, as I get my greasy, dirty fingers all over it there. Um, these panels are supposed to provide really good sound dampening, um, and I'm really excited to see how quiet this computer is uh, inside of this case. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, I got a fan back there. I got one intake fan right there. So you can tell which side is intake um, because the, uh, the, the wind or the fan is gonna blow towards the fancy fractal design. So you can see this is the intake. It's gonna be pulling air from the front here, which I believe this panel here, I don't know. I think it pops off um, 
because there is, it did talk about that there being a, uh, some kind of a filter. Um, yeah, I can see the filter right here. And it should be, it's advertised as being easy, easy to take out so you can uh, clean the dust off the filters. Um, and then there is no filter on the backside, but that's because this is the exhaust. Uh, generally speaking, you don't need a dust cover for the exhaust because as long as all the dust covers coming in are, um, are basically covered with this and they're preventing dust from getting into the system, you shouldn't be getting too much of a buildup on the exhaust side of your system. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, again, I was talking about with this now... Um, I, I think I might have to use like a some sort of a flat head to pop that open because that's a really tight fit which I like but this here is the mesh one so if I did decide to open up the ventilation up here it's, it's hard to see because I don't have good lighting so I apologize for that uh, maybe if I tilt this over yeah so you can see there uh, there's ventilation at the top. So if I were to, uh, I think the main reason for that, and I personally refuse to use water cooling um, because I think air cooling is pretty much just as efficient from a uh, noise level to cooling level. Uh, and I mean, water cooling, you use a radiator that has fans on it. So it's not like, uh, it's just, it's the science. Um, water cooling looks cool. It is a little bit more efficient if you're overclocking or uh, doing other crazy stuff. But for standard, normal gaming, and I don't plan on really overclocking anything, um, I think air cooling is just fine. A lot cheaper, more reliable, and less likely to fail. So I'm going with air cooling personally. So yeah, anyway. I uh, just wanted to show off this cool, cool case. I was, I'm was i super impressed by this case, um, and I look forward to building inside of it. So next up, we'll do some movie magic, and you'll have a computer with a motherboard inside of it. Ta-da! Got this bad boy mounted in here. Again, sorry for the bad lighting, guys. Let me go ahead and set this bad boy down. But, uh, yeah, uh, fun times. Uh, I had to learn about putting the standoffs down below these screws here. Um, I was able to get the heat sink that I was mentioning. Ooh. Yeah, sitting on that empty box. My bad. Try not to do that, guys. Touch for good luck and to ground myself. Um, but yeah, um, got everything on there. Uh, went ahead and took the two standoffs here. So that way I can uh, go ahead and get the video card which I had to go ahead and shut off my old computer so I could pull my beast of a 1080 Ti out get it ready to go um, but yeah that's pretty much that'll be the next step install the uh, video card here uh, then we're gonna go ahead and install the power supply get the cables all mounted in there um, I went ahead and got the second intake fan installed uh, what's really cool is that there are a little hole right here for me to route the fan um, power uh, through again this case is so clean there's literally going to be like almost zero cables coming out of the top here except to go into the various uh, power connectors um, I am loving how clean everything is going to look inside of here um, hopefully that equates to better uh, temperatures better sound and all of that good stuff because again nice metal plate over this I do not like having a glass plate and a bunch of blinky lights in my face. So uh, yeah, so next up, video card. I'm gonna put that big old power supply in right back there. Alrighty. All right, so everything is installed. It's up and running. Went ahead and powered the beast on and found ourselves to the BIOS screen. Where everything is looking correct. So uh, CPU is running at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, the DDR speed is low. Um, that's the default speed. I will be bumping that up later, but I'm gonna not worry about that until after I get my Windows installed, which by the way, I've got my 
media creation disk, which I created up there and put it in there. So uh, that's ready to go. Um, make sure our RAM looks good. So it's showing there. I got it in the uh, DIM A2 and DIM B2. So they're both running in dual channel. And uh, I'm going to be changing it uh, eventually to the XMP profile there. Um, but for right now, we're just going to leave it default. Don't need to go all crazy with it. I'm um, showing my processor up here. It's all going correctly. Uh, double check to make sure my storage is showing up. So uh, M.2 slash 1, I got my Samsung SSD 970 EVO 500 gigabytes. It's all installed. Good to go. Um, I do have the SATA port 1 and 2 plugged in. I do not have my hard drives plugged in, and that's for good reason. Um, I'm trying to bring over some of the information from my other computer, and um, essentially what I'm trying to do here is it's those SATA cables are underneath the uh, where the graphics card is. So I had to plug the cables in before I put the graphics card in, otherwise I would have ended up having to pull the graphics card out after doing all this just to get my SATA cables in there and everything so yeah but as you can see very clean um, the cables are coming out let me see if I can shine some light in there um, cables are coming out looping right in there same with the system fans there uh, same with these ones they're not you know it's not too crazy they're not just looping all over the place I was able to get all of the cables to get behind the motherboard chassis which is super nice uh, keeping it nice and clean looking so love it it does look like a mess in the back which trust me I plan on doing a lot of cable management back here I've got a lot of cable ties I can use um, I do plan on making that look nice and clean even though no one will ever see it because again this clean this case is going to be nice and clean and not look all crazy I'm actually kind of hoping that there will be a way to turn this light off because that light is it's a little aggressive it's a little bright well maybe not from the side it's not too bad from the side but straight on that, that bastard is bright so uh yeah cool uh anyway so next up install windows and then once windows is installed i'll go ahead and uh make sure everything looks good looks like it's running correctly um, and then I'll get my other SATA drives installed, make sure my data transfers over correctly. And then uh, last but not least, I'll boost up my uh, DDR4 RAM up to its XMP profile. And then run some benchmarks and see how like Overwatch runs and all that good stuff and see how much of an improvement I see over my old system. Ta-da! So got Windows installed and activated. A little bit of a pain in the butt, but... Um, Kind of to be expected from how I got my Windows 10 key, which won't go into. Um, it was completely legal. I paid for it, but um, probably paid a lot less than you would normally pay. So whatever. But anyway, as you can see, installing Overwatch right now. And then also downloading my Windows updates. Uh, went in, updated my XMP profile on my memory. So it's running at its um, advertised speed. Uh, my computer feels like it's running extremely well. Um, it is very quiet. I love it. Um, still haven't installed all the stuff on there because I do still need to put my SATA drives in. As you can see, I got the two cables just kind of hanging out there. Um, so I still need to install my two SATA um, drives. I don't want to do that until I'm done installing everything on here so I don't accidentally install stuff on the wrong drive. Um, I'm kind of putting the most essential things on my NVMe drive, so my Overwatch and obviously my Windows and all my drivers, basically all the stuff I run every single day. So like my Discord and my Overwatch um, and what I'll be using to edit this video, which I still need to figure that out. So um yeah, since I'm planning on making more and more YouTube videos, I need to figure out a good editing software that is uh, not going to cost me an arm and a leg. So, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Um, but, yeah, so right now we're just going to wait for uh, this to finish downloading, which it shouldn't take too long. And I'm going to launch up Overwatch. 
Uh, it should already have all my settings in there. And then we're going to see how much of a difference in FPS I see with my new setup. All right, got her installed. And boy, oh boy, is there a big difference. So it looks quite obvious that my CPU and memory in my old rig was definitely the bottleneck because um, on these settings, I normally would get around like 160 um, FPS and lower. Um, and now, holding pretty damn steady around uh, 230 to 240 uh, FPS, uh, which is pretty, pretty darn good. Um, so, yeah, uh, super happy with all of that. Uh, looks like this was a pretty successful build. Uh, now all that's left is for me to go ahead and uh, get everything cleaned up, uh, get my data transferred over from my uh, SATA drives, install the two SATA drives I plan on using in this bad boy, and uh, yeah, um, once that's all done, I'm going to show you all the final product. I'm going to show you the uh, um, cable management in the back, and... Uh, then panel her up and see how she sounds. Uh, I might even, uh, there's an option for me to turn the fans on full blast. I'm kind of curious just to see if I turn them all on full blast with all the case covers on, how loud it is. Because um, right now it's it's not that loud and I have everything wide open. So I'm um, kind of curious to see what it'll sound like once I have those sound dampening covers on there. So. All right, so we are officially done. Reassembled it. It is a pretty, pretty thing. I love that it's just simple, clean, and I pumped up the fans to max speed right now just to see how loud it would get. And I don't know if you can pick this up on the phone or not, but I'm just going to put the phone closer to the computer so you can get an idea. So even at max speed, so you can see that up here, we got our RPMs up there at the top. Um, even at max speed, uh, this thing is honestly uh, very quiet. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back to uh, default here. Goes into smart fan mode. All right. Close that, but as you can see, got my DDR4 running at 3600. Uh, everything is running as shit should be, which is awesome. All right, well, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, again, sorry, it's a bit of a scuffed video. Uh, again, using my cell phone for this. Uh, do plan on pulling out the webcam and uh, I'm gonna try and do some uh, other content. Um, I'm getting I'm getting back up in rank on Overwatch because I've been playing it quite a bit since being in quarantine, um, and I've been focusing a lot on just getting better. Uh, I've joined actually a uh, Overwatch team that I've um, just been learning with. We have a wonderful coach. And uh, it's been a lot of good learning experiences. Uh, I've been meeting a lot of great people on Overwatch still. It's still my favorite game. Um, I know there's a lot of cool stuff out like Valorant and things like that. But uh, uh, I'll go play it for a little bit. And then I'm immediately straight back to Overwatch. Just can't help it. Love the game. Um, and uh, yeah, so plan on putting out some stuff there. I think what I'm planning on doing is doing some uh, some VOD reviews. So I'm gonna go through, like maybe I have a competitive match where um, maybe it's like a close loss, a uh, close win, I don't know. Uh, just take a look at it and just kind of analyze uh, my positioning, um, some decisions I may have made and see if I can pinpoint some mistakes in my gameplay, figure out if I can uh, better help myself there. Um, 
and then maybe even have my coach take a look at my bot review and see if they agree with my analysis of my play. Um, so that should be fun. Um, and if I get good at it, um, get better at video editing and things like that, I might start doing VOD reviews for my friends and potentially the community. Um, in terms of streaming, I know I'm wearing my Twitch shirt here. Uh, unfortunately, there is no plans on returning to Twitch streaming. Um, main reason isn't actually time. Granted, I am working quite a bit now. I'm not um, part-time like I was back in California. Um, but the main reason being here in Las Vegas, uh, you only have one internet c provider. I'm not going to badmouth them because I don't want to deal with that. But uh, you can look them up. They're a cable company. Uh, they do not offer unlimited internet. I get one terabyte of internet a month. And I know Twitch streaming... Uh, with how much I Twitch streamed, uh, I would blow through that pretty quickly. And the other thing is, even though they offer gigabit internet, it's only gigabit download internet. Um, it's still capped at like 100 or 150 up, something something low like that. Um, and it's just, uh, especially with some of the internet issues I've been having, um, I just know it would probably drop a lot of frames not be a very good stream and in order to get unlimited I have to pay an extra 50 bucks a month and that's just not worth it to me right now so uh, I just figured this is a good opportunity I'm gonna go ahead and um, focus on YouTube content uh, making videos uh, uploading those um, video editing things like that I think that would you know and then potentially down the road if that really starts to take off I gain an audience uh, maybe then I can start looking at uh, maybe purchasing unlimited internet and trying to get back into streaming. Um, some life updates for me. Uh, the Air Force has been wonderful. I'm just finishing up a, um, a course that I've been in. Uh, basically, it's an advanced avionics course, and that has gone very well. It's been very nice. Um, it's taken me off the flight line. Uh, not that I was getting burned out because I'm still way too new to be burned out, but um, it was a nice little break. And uh, yeah, thankfully, I don't think I've caught the COVID. Uh, granted, a lot of people who have are showing basically no symptoms. So who knows? Wear your mask, not for your own sake. Wear a mask because you might have it and not realize it and you might be spreading it to all sorts of people. That's the main reason for this social isolation for, um, you know, uh, to not, not spread this disease. Um, best way to think of it is uh, you're not trying to stay, your, stay, for, stay healthy and try and keep yourself from getting it. Uh, think of it as though you're the only one who has it and you're trying to make sure you don't give it to anyone else. Um, you use that mindset and you'll be more careful. You'll uh, not put your loved ones and the rest of the human race in jeopardy because you think you're invulnerable and uh, turns out you're just a typhoid Mary and you're just giving it to everyone else. Uh, so don't be that. Don't do that. Be safe. Stay home. Play video games. Um, video chat. Make YouTube videos. Twitch stream. Do what you can. I know it sucks. Um, I miss I miss social interaction. I miss being around people. I miss meeting new people. Um, but you know, that's the world we live in right now, and uh, uh, not much we can do about it until they uh, develop some vaccines and uh, figure out a way to get the get ahead of this. So yeah. Um, in terms of other content, um, I actually am going to uh, I th I'm I'm going to be making chicken wings tomorrow. And anyone who follows me on Instagram or uh, Twitter, which I'll put in the description down below, um, I post pictures of my chicken wings all the time. I actually post pictures of a lot of my food, um, and I kind of want to start putting up food-related uh, YouTube content. So. Uh, plans are I'm going to be making some uh, chicken wings. Uh, I'm going to try something new. Uh, I've been doing the same old recipe over and over and over again. 
uh, just straight chicken. I'm not doing anything special to it before I put it, um, basically take it through the cooking process, which I'm, I'll video uh, record. But um, this time I'm thinking I'm going to try and marinate my chicken in pineapple juice. Um, I have some in my fridge. I looked it up on the internet and they say that pineapple juice is a great uh, marinade because of its acidic content and uh, the flavoring that it can infuse. So um, yeah, uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that. So I've got a lot of video editing in front of me, but thankfully I've got this sweet, sweet new computer here um, that should be able to handle that and allow me to learn how to video edit a little bit better and hopefully get this content up on YouTube before too long. Just gotta make sure I don't procrastinate. So anyway, I'm done rambling. This has been a long ramble. I apologize. I might need to edit it out. We'll see. Anyway, love you guys. Apple signing out. Bye.